Greetings students, welcome to COM 435. I am Dr. Elizabeth Cohen, your instructor for this course. Um, as you can see, we are not meeting in class for syllabus day. Um, actually, the reason this happened is because last year at this time, I actually had to be away at a conference on the first day of school, so I had to do this, and it worked out great. The reason I like this is because it really pisses me off when I go through all the syllabus stuff and then somebody like adds the class like the next week and they're like, what did I miss? And I'm like, well, why don't we do this at all? Um, instead of making everybody come to class, why don't we all have an extra day of summer and just sit in our pajamas and watch this? Now, I know this is not going to be comfortable. Um, watching a video of me talking for 20 minutes um, is kind of crappy. I get that. But... What I need you to do is think about the alternative. Watching a video of me for 20 minutes or sitting in class, watching me talk about the same stuff, but not being in your pajamas. I know you're probably not in your pajamas, and I know a lot of you still had to go to campus anyway, but I still think this is uh, a better idea. So what am I gonna do? I've got your syllabus. You can get your syllabus on eCampus. I'm gonna just hit the highlights, because sometimes it's better to hear people talk about this, I guess. Um, and you do have a syllabus quiz, so I'll try to like help you out with some of the more important details for that. Um, and if you can make it through this video, maybe I'll even throw in some sort of extra credit as like a pat on the back for doing the right thing. Um, <clears throat> this class is called Advanced Social Media. If I could retitle it, I would call it, because I didn't get to pick the title. Basically, I like, I came to WVU seven years ago and they're like, hey, we have this class, Advanced Social Media. Will you design it and teach it? And I did. And every year since then, because I have taught it every single fall since I've been here, um, it's changed a lot. But the one thing that it's always kind of been about is what I would call contemporary issues in social media. Um, and that's why it changes all the time, because what I try to do with this class is uh, pick different things going on in the world in social media um, and really wrestle with what's going on. Um, so it changes a lot. Um, it used to be a very happy class where we sat around and talked about how funny memes were. I mean, I'm simplifying. And now we're talking about how social media is destroying our democracy and stuff like that. Now, it's not that bad. Um, it's really not. Maybe a little, but not that bad. Um, anyway, that is what we're doing in this class. It's not a class where, you know, we're going to, I'm going to like teach you like how to up your Instagram numbers or whatever. Um, I, you know, the truth is, is, is I do operate under the assumption that if you need to learn how to use social media, you probably wouldn't be in this class to begin with. And social media changes so much anyway that, I, you know, um, focusing on different types of platforms uh, in terms of like, well, how do I do this? And how do I, it, it doesn't seem to uh, be the most useful thing, in my opinion, that I can do for you. Um, but given that a lot of you will maybe want to be using social media um, in your future careers and things like that, the tools I really want to give you is th this sort of critical thinking skills that will allow you, no matter what platform you work for or what platform you work with, um, to make different types of decisions that um, are hopefully um, critical and ethical and all of that garbage. So that's where we're going. And you, if you're a social media minor uh, or major, you have to take this class. So. If you like it, I'm so happy for you. If you don't, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, actually, the good news is, is you don't have to buy any books for this class. There's like one book that I actually did used to make you buy, and that was super cheap. But then I found out it's like um, for free on the library. So you can just go access it digitally through the library. If you want to buy it, do it. Um, but you don't have to do anything like that. The only thing you do have to do is check eCampus regularly, yada, yada, yada. But also, um, and this is where like I feel a little guilty but not guilty enough to stop, I need you to join the Facebook group for this class. Um, the irony is, is we're going to spend a lot of time talking about how Facebook sucks. And believe me, I know that you don't like Facebook. Well, most of you don't. There's a lot of research about how um, uh, people your age really are totally over Facebook and haven't been using it um, since you were like, I don't know, like eight or whatever. <laughs> I don't know when you started using but um, I get that. Um, I totally understand, but I'm not asking you to join the group. Um, again, because I want you to be skilled at using Facebook. I'm asking you to join the group because discussions on Facebook tend to be better in the group than they do on eCampus, because eCampus is a really horrible platform. Um, 
So I have instructions on there and I just want to make it clear. I do want you to join this Facebook group, but I do not need you to be my friend. In fact, I don't friend my undergrads until after graduation because it just gets weird. They're just things I don't want to know. Um, but after graduation, by the way, ugh, can be friends all day. Um, but the other thing is that, you know, if you are uncomfortable, like, which I can totally understand, like, like, let's say you don't have a Facebook account and you don't want to set one up. Um, cause you don't want to give Facebook your information. That's totally fine. I would ask you then to set up a fake Facebook account and let me know who you are just so you still have access through it, but you can use a fake name and everything. So long as you just tell me who it is. I don't, you know, I totally get that. Um, but if you're comfortable, join the Facebook group. There's a link to it on the syllabus, um, with your regular account and don't worry we won't be friends. <laughs> like that's it. Um, it is a, it's a closed group, but there are students from other, um, from other 435 classes that I've had in there. Um, if they haven't run away afterwards. Um, okay. So that's what you need to do. Make sure you get on eCampus, make sure you join that Facebook group. I will actually dock. There's no rewards for joining the Facebook group, but I will actually dock points. Um, if you haven't joined Facebook by a certain amount of time, which I probably put on here. By the end of the second week, if you have not joined Facebook, this will result in an automatic deduction of 25% of your participation points. And that should tell you that another reason I want the Facebook group is because I do understand that not everybody um, feels comfortable contributing in class, but if you are cool contributing online, you can get points, you know, for, well, actually no literal points. I don't know why I use quotations. You can get points for going on the Facebook group. So do that. Okay. Um, on this page, you can see there's nice structure of um, all of the different assignments you have and the different points that come with it. The first thing you're going to need to do is a syllabus quiz, which I already mentioned. You need to do that ASAP so you don't forget about it because it'll just disappear, poof, and then you'll miss your 10 points. Go on eCampus, take the syllabus quiz. I recommend having the syllabus with you. Uh, I've heard that's helpful. Um, and the only catch with this is that I do think it's an easy 10 points and you can take it as many times as you want. So if you get nine points the first time, um, you can take it again and hopefully get 10 points. The catch though, is that you have to get the 10 points. I will only, it's like all or nothing. If you get nine points, I'll give you a zero. If you get 10 points, I'll give you the 10 points. The point is I just want you to be able to answer all the questions, right? Which again, shouldn't be a problem since you can take the quiz as many times as you want. And, um, you'll have your syllabus right in front of you. We will also be having quizzes throughout the semester. We're going to have these uh, pop reading quizzes, so you won't know exactly when you're going to get them. People do like to guess, though. I'll let you in on a secret, though. I, uh, I've already written all the quizzes, so I actually know when they're coming. And actually, I don't like have it in my head, but like before I go to class, I'm like, oh, is there a quiz today? And I'm like, okay, yes, I take it in. Um, so it, it was done pretty much at random. But um, on some days, we're going to have pop quizzes on your readings. There'll be about five questions, super quick, because I don't want to take a lot of time, just to give you a little added incentive to do your readings. The readings in this class, by the way, if you look, you can see them like listed like in the back here, and there's even links to them. You see, and this, I can't, this is like a bad mirror. You see there, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, it, it looks like there's a lot and that's because there are, but all of the readings, except for a few in this class are pop press readings. Like they are like five minute reads, like articles from, I don't know, like, uh, from courts or something like that. Right. I, what I've tried to do because this is a contemporary issues class to bring in conversation pieces that come from stuff that you might be a little bit more re used to reading anyway. This isn't supposed to be a test on your reading comprehension. The readings are really supposed to give us fodder so that we can talk about them in class. So when you look at, um, and actually your first reading is a bad example because that is a book chapter, but after that, you know, most of the readings that you're going to have in this class are going to be like these really like dense academic things. So that's the good news. Um, bad news is, is you have to do them. Um, otherwise you won't do well on your quizzes. But even if you do bad on your quizzes, I left a little leeway in there such that if you, um, what's going to happen at the end of the semester is I will drop your, what did I say? Your two lowest. Yeah. Um, 
I'll drop your two lowest quiz grades. So that means even if you miss a quiz, because there's no makeup quizzes, I don't give a quiz and then like somebody walks in and like talks to their buddy and is like, hey, what were the questions? And they're like, here you go, sweetie. It's not like that. Like if you don't, if you're not there for a quiz because you're late or you're absent, that's it. Sorry, no quiz for you. Um, but the, the, I have built it in such that your two lowest quiz grades get dropped. So what that means is that you can still have a little leeway. So if you do miss a quiz, it's not necessarily a zero, okay? Um, the other thing that you're going to have to do, and this is, I mean, if you look at the distribution for assignments, this is a big one because um, it's 100 points out of 385. Um, you're going to have to do short written reading reflections. Another reason to do your readings. These are reflections that, in, they're not, they're supposed to be informal and they're supposed to be short, but it requires you to reflect on the readings that you did. This needs to be submitted before class on eCampus on the discussion board, okay? Um, there will be prompts, so it'll ask you, it'll tell you what to do. Um, it'll say like, oh, you just read about X, Y, and Z, you know, why do you think X is whatever? And you'll have to write a paragraph or two explaining that, okay? And I will be grading you on the quality of your argument, but not like, I don't care about spelling mistakes, I don't care about curse words, I don't care about formalities or any of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> What I do care about is you submitting them on time because I don't accept late work um, unless it's like a major project or an exam. Um, because the way I look at it is like you can pick when you do these reading reflections and you can. So if you're like late, then you can just pick another one. OK, um, the reading reflections though do need to be submitted on 12 o'clock the day that we're going to be discussing the readings in class. In other words, you can't do the reading reflections after we discussed it in class. Part of the reason I do this is because I want to be able to read your thoughts before we talk about it in class. And two, um, I want you to have formulated it instead of us like, you know, putting ideas in your head during discussion, okay? So just to reiterate, you have reading reflections to do, but they have to be done before class. Not just before class, but 12 p.m. that day. So hopefully during my office hours, if nobody shows up, I can spend some time reading them. You will also have a take-home midterm and take-home final exam in this class. They will be written essays, but you can take them home. So again, well, I mean, I used to like essays compared to like multiple choice and stuff, but it's a 400 level class, so I got to do that. Um, pluses and minuses. On one hand, you can take it home and you can work on your own time. On the other hand, it, it does require some heavy writing. Um, and, you know, this isn't like, again, I'm assigning like pop press articles. This isn't a class with like vocabulary words. I'm not interested in you learning vocabulary or whatever. I'm interested in, in you trying to critically think about the issues that are going on uh, with social media and society. So that's what the exams are going to look like. Um, but yeah, basically, I'll give you a week ahead of time. I'll give you an essay question or maybe a couple, depending on you know what's going on. You'll take it home. You'll draft up maybe like four or five pages, and then you'll upload it to eCampus. And ta-da, that's your midterm and your final. Um, the other big component of your class is class participation. Oh, man, you should go and look at my, uh, what do you call it? Um, go look at my rate my rate year professor there was a kid like in uh 435 like a couple years ago i mean i don't know who it is though i have my suspicions um and he gave me like a mean rating on rate your professors and she's like she really cares about participation and like and i'm like yes well yes i do this is a very accurate rate my professor uh review you should you should listen to that review it's true they hated me um because i do I don't like teaching where I'm just like talking to myself and I don't like teaching when I don't know how other people that I'm teaching feel about these issues and I expect you to weigh in sometimes, most of the time, a lot of the time. Now, if there's, I don't know how many we've got now, let's say we'll end up with about 25 people in the class. I get it. Not everybody can talk all the time and I do talk a lot. So that saves you. But, you know, I always tell people, if I don't know who you are by a quarter of the semester, because like you ain't saying anything, this is this will not bode, bode well for you. Now, as I mentioned before, though, there is a little bit of a, uh, I don't know what you want to call a plan B, if you will, or if you really hate talking in class and you just can't. Um, another thing I'll factor into participation is if you post to that Facebook group, I'm making you join a lot. I'll consider that a form of participation and that can pad, um, you know, your participation in class. But you got to do a good job. You can't just be like all like, um, hey, I found this post. 
you have to contribute something, not just the content, but your thoughts on the content or tell us what to do. Okay. And I can talk to you about that kind of stuff if you have questions. Um, but I'm, I mean, that is one, I would say skill that I wouldn't mind you guys coming out of this class, even though, again, it's not a skills class, you should learn how to post something in an interesting way, as opposed to just being like, Hey, look, like it's not the most engaging thing you can do. Um, for class participation. So three times in the semester, I'm going to give you a grade. So what will happen is, is out like a th once a third of the semester is over, I'm going to assign you a participation grade based on my, yes, very subjective, but I'm pretty good assessment of how involved I think you've been or how uninvolved I think you've been. I mean, like sleeping in class and all that stuff, you know, that doesn't bode well. Um, I've been using bode well a lot today. Bode. It doesn't bode well. Um, you know, when you get something in your head, you just, it just goes over and over and over again. I'm going to have to like erase it from my mind. Bode. Maybe bode. Um, so class participation will be in three installments. Now, the one nice thing about this is like, okay, let's say that, you know, um, in the first installment, you get like a 15 out of 25, which is like not the worst, but not great either. Right. And you want to improve it. Well, the next round, I'm not going to factor that in at all. It's like a clean slate for the next thing. So you can get a 15 one time and then you can get a 25 the next time and a 25 after that. Um, and actually, that's why I do it, because sometimes I really don't think people understand, you know, how uh, <laughs> absent they are when they're present in class. So I'd like to give, you know, a little marker at the beginning. And so you can see, be like, OK, good, I'm, I'm doing fine. You know, I'll just keep this up or, whoa, I really need to like contribute more. OK, so that's how it works. And that's what we're doing for your grade. You got your syllabus quiz. You'll have reading quizzes, reading reflections, a midterm, a final, and then the class participation. It's actually not that much when you think about it, right? If you can, the hardest part is going to be for some of you to just do your readings so that you can do the reading reflections and do the um, reading quizzes. But in case you haven't noticed, I've given you a lot of incentive to do it because I know it's hard. As an undergraduate, I did not read. I will confess. I would read really quickly before class. But I'll tell you something. I was really good at hiding that and participating anyway. So, well, anyway. Um, you can read all about the details of these things yourself. Um, oh, attendance. Oh, this is another sad thing that that guy was probably upset about in my rate your professor. How did I know it was a guy? There must have been some sort of tell in how he said it where I'm like, I know who you were, but um, I shouldn't be sexist, but I'm pretty sure there's a reason why. Anyway, attendance. Um, I'm going to read this out loud to you. I have structured this course so that it's harder to make a decent grade if you don't come to class. At the same time, I also feel like I've stru structured the class where if you do come to class and you do participate, it really boosts your grade a lot. Um, <clears throat> So anyway, yada, yada, yada. Discussion's important. Attendance is important. Having said that, though, I don't think my attendance policy is so bad. Um, basically, there's 22 scheduled discussions during the semester. There's only 22 because if you look at the schedule, I've already canceled a bunch of classes for things like I got to go to a guest lecture like in the middle of the semester and I can't make class. Oh, Rosh Hashanah, you get off for Rosh Hashanah. Yay, Jews. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So you can go celebrate your Jewish New Year. Um, and oh and then election day we've got election day that we get off so basically there's a whole lot of days that you don't even have to come to class anyway uh, 22 is really the only times that we're all together discussing it what i'm asking for is saying that you have to come to, if you miss i mean you can miss up to five you have five freebie days now listen if you miss a class and you um, don't come, you could also be missing something like a, a reading quiz or something like that. So it's not complete free. I shouldn't say that. It's not like free free. You, you're at risk of missing other things. But the point is, is like you can miss class under the attendance policy without any penalty. OK, but after five. So if you miss six or seven, whatever, um, you're going to have your final grade for the course drop by two letter grades. That means if you're making an A and you miss six days. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you, um, so the point of this is just like, you just have to plan ahead. And I don't really care if you miss a couple of classes. I care if you can't be here for at least what did I say? Um, 
if, if, if you can't attend at least 73% of the classes, if you're going to have to miss a quarter of the class for any reason, now is not a good semester to take this class. So if you, for instance, um, are part of some sort of athletic, um, <laughs> some sort of sports ball team or whatever, where you know that you're going to have to like miss a lot of class, I would not do this class this semester. Or if you are going through some personal issues, and you think that there's a very good chance that you're going to have to miss a over a quarter of the class. This isn't a good time to take this class. That's what I'm trying to like convey to you. Again, things come up. I get it. I, there's a good chance I'll get sick this, sem this semester, but I guarantee you I won't be sick six days. You know what I mean? Like, so um, it's up to you to at, at least, you know, pace yourself when you need a little break and you don't want to come to class. Um, because if you get to that point, um, you know, it's going to be, Having said that, when we do meet, I will start taking attendance on that first day, so um, just be aware. Uh, late assignments, makeup, I already said, I don't take any late assignments, except your exams. If your exams come in late, I'll just deduct points for the days that they're late. Academic dishonesty, yeah, I mean, be honest. Don't sell my course material. You're not even going to get my course material. Social justice, yeah. Inclement threatening weather procedures, I mean, I wish. I actually love it when we have snow and stuff, but in the fall, it never happens. It did happen. My first semester here, it was actually near Halloween, which was crazy, but it hasn't happened since, so I don't worry about it. Um, okay, I actually, I think that covers it. Oh, I did promise you, a, okay, this this will be for some sort of like extra credit. Um, bode. <laughs> That'll be the word. Um, here. Is that how you spell bode? B-O-D-E. Bode. Does not bode well. Um, that will be the secret word that if I ask you for a couple of extra points, probably not much, just a little padding, to reward you for paying attention. What was the secret word? Bode. Does not bode well. Actually, let me... I'm not joking. I'm like, I don't know. It would be like bo bode. Bode. Let me... Oh. Where did that take me? Yes, it is an omen of a particular outcome according to the dictionary. So it does not bode well. Uh, that's the secret word and I will find some way to give you a little extra credit for paying attention and sticking with me so long. So what I need you to do now is enjoy the last few days of your summer. In the meantime, do try to take that syllabus quiz and I will see you on Tuesday for our official first day of class when I'll be taking attendance and we'll start talking about contemporary issues in social media. Um, thanks for hanging in there. I know this isn't easy, but it's better than coming to class. <laughs>